Babaji, the first question is, what is meant by surrender, Babaji? The real surrender in spirituality is when your mind surrenders. When mind surrenders means it does not analyze or make any judgments and does not even recognize anything else other than the divinity. So that is the real surrender. This happens only in deeper meditations. As you progress in meditation, when all thoughts and visions all stop and the mind silence is being achieved, then mind doesn't think or analyze or make any judgment. It becomes quiet and quiet. So that is when I have always told mind has no third way. Either it is into its own imaginations or when it is able to stop those imaginations, it goes to its ultimate source which is recognized as divine. So it merges slowly, goes towards the divinity. That is the real worship or real surrender. So this is what is the required aspect of the spirituality. Babaji, the next question. When we say surrender, what are we actually expected to surrender? Can you please start to explain how we should do this, Babaji? Yeah. Precisely talking, I can say that the ego of the mind needs to be surrendered. Because if there is ego, we try to maintain a separate identity for our own existence. When we do that, we narrow down into the physical body and then become selfish. In that selfishness, we forget the divine that is all pervaded, that we forget that the oneness of our own real self is simply all pervaded. <coughs> it is something like we forget that we are that space. Instead, we become a small dot in the space. Or instead, we forget we are the ocean. We start thinking that we are just a droplet. So that is what is the... Uh, that is what we need to surrender. If we surrender that one, we will go and merge with the ultimate source of ourselves will happen one day. So for this purpose only, we need to surrender. We can either hold the ego by staying away from the divinity or surrender that ego so that we become one with the divine. Thank you, Babaji. The next question what is spiritual achievement, Babaji? And how do we measure spiritual achievement? First, everybody need to understand that everybody is looking for peace and happiness. But if the path is not known, or in other words, if the technology is not known, technique is not known, how to achieve that? Then people take wrong paths. They go after the materialistic world, they go after object matter and there is a never-ending pursuit just like you pursue water for water in a desert. So that type of thing happens. This uh, happiness is always elusive in this world. To achieve this, you have to quieten the mind. Mind silence has to be achieved. That is what is the first step for spiritual achievement. Spiritual achievement means you become aware how you exist as that soul that is in the spirit form. Spirit means not visible to the naked eyes. Though it is formless, though it is there, it appears as if it is not there. So that's what the spirit. So to achieve that means just to give an example, imagine that you are the space, but now you have become something else because of your imagination. You have to give up and become that space. 
it appears to be like a void but it is supreme consciousness and existence for that only the great sages told of atman achieving the atma sakshatkaram sakshat means as it is you become aware of your real self that is the spiritual achievement that is recommended that is needed through this sadhana of meditation also you achieve that one when you achieve that awareness you also gain a supreme permanent peace and happiness enjoyable happiness which will remain at all times it won't break down and it won't disappear the constant cravings of the mind is the basic reason for all unhappiness so we have to understand and go for spiritual achievement Thank you, Baba Ji. Baba Ji always encourages us to do meditation. But other than meditation, what are your recommendations of good spiritual sadhana, Baba Ji? Several ways. Some important things we can take up in your active life. One is the meditation. You all know. You have to take out at least one hour of time every day. not simply once in a fortnight baba ji comes so if we present be present in front of him so he will be impressed no not like that your sadhana has to be every day you have to be impressed you have to be sincere to yourself then only you can achieve so that's what has to happen next one bhakti marga be devoted in the name of the divine are the divine guru you have to fall in love you have to love so that at all times your mind is aware of that remembrance only remembrance of that guru or that divine that is what is important then your mind gets connected to the divinity then also it will become quiet and more focused single pointedly it will be towards the divinity so thus it re- starts remaining contented when it is contented it is totally secure and achieves peace and eventually one day in your consciousness you can achieve that divinity at all times so that is what is the bhakti marga it is very important other is the karma yoga you are active in this world no problem you have to live in this world no problem you have to live but while trying to live while you are being active in the world you would like to plan for a successful life so that you can achieve success in life maintain a good standard of life for all these things you would like to earn a livelihood that which can give you more comfortable life so for this you have to strive you have to plan and put an effort when putting an effort you remain focused on the effort don't get involved into an anxiousness about future or brooding about past that disturbs your 100% focus so and then when the result comes after your effort sometimes or often even if it is not according to your expectations accept accept it as the divine's wish so this was supposed to happen and this has happened no problem we will try again then the mind recedes it surrenders it accepts everything as the divine verdict it is the master who has made this it's okay no problem if this is his wishes let it happen like this so that's what the karma yoga then the mind goes into yoga into the reunion with the divine so it recedes so there is no more craving the craving stops so that's how we live like with swami ji while we lived whatever was ordained we simply went on do, doing we never saw whether it was to our liking or not as long as health permitted in our young age whatever came in front as a in the ashram life that food we took we didn't have likes and dislike that we won't like this vegetable we don't like this dal there was no such thing all dal everything that was cooked we took it 
there was no reservation and what type of work in the ashram we had to do there was no reservation any work that was that came across that was given to us ordained by our master to look after somebody anything we simply did it without bothering thus our mind receded it surrendered it became quiet so this is the karma yoga so like this several paths are there and in spiritual exercises apart from meditation music can be a very good therapy singing the divine glory devotional song practice and sings melodiously so that it sucks your mind it makes your mind concentrated and also participating in agnihotras and seva karyams all these things can be very helpful for you to surrender mentally thank you baba ji the next question baba ji some people say that by surrendering surrendering to lord krishna we will attain bliss forever while if we pray to other deities we attain heaven but once we exhaust our merits we will take rebirth can you help to address if there is any difference in to whom and how we pray you see many people who have either read or heard about bhagavad gita they tend to imagine wrongly like this in bhagavad gita shri krishna advises arjuna arjuna if you cannot do any type of other yoga just surrender to me and if you surrender to me you will attain the divine if you surrender to any other deities angels devatas you attain only them so for this many people misunderstand it is not complete by surrendering to other devatas it is not that it all depends on your imagination like when you surrender to swami ji if you even in your imagination swami ji as the lord divine master then you achieve the same truth when you surrender to krishna also you have to imagine that krishna is the supreme lord you surrender to lord shivan then you have to imagine shiva is the supreme lord you surrender to hanuman then you have to imagine lord hanuman as the supreme lord so even imagination is what matters if you can imagine about that deity as the supreme final god then you achieve that one you achieve that supreme divine so in bhakti marga your imagination is important that criteria so that is why you see even we all know that god is all pervaded he is in everything as everything everywhere yet when we see other thing if our imagination comes to only that much we imagine chocolate as god we imagine a small stone as a shivalingam lord shiva as god then god is there for us in that but if you imagine that it is only a stone only the stone appears depending on your imagination the things appear so here it is not the krishna things it is your visualization your faith in the name of lord that can work wonders thank you baba ji after we surrender baba ji what should be the mindset to take the next action you put an effort to achieve anything you want you want self realization you always put an effort to silence the mind but here if you surrender for all your actions and don't expect anything just accept whatever results come so that is what is needed that's all you have to do nothing else that will take you to divine finally how much you can surrender small small things happen in life then again big big things happen lot of big troubles come big troubles comes more big troubles comes you bear with it more big troubles comes the divine goes on testing testing it is like when you are in primary or nursery school a small test is given and you are passed and you are promoted to next class as you go on to middle school high school college university research and specializations 
the strength of the tests also increase in the same way the divine tests when you are ready to surrender how much you can remain in patience how much you can remain surrendered god might cut you into pieces grind you into chutney everything anything can happen life can become so miserable and you might start thinking of scolding god giving up god anything giving up the guru everything such troubles come but that is what a saint ka known as devara dasimayya he tells lord shiva he grinds you into chutney he cuts you into small pieces and he whips you like anything like this the life will become so bitter all loving people abandon you and they go away but if you can remain unperturbed total courage never got scared no panic no problem always remain attached to the divine master then lord shiva takes you into his laps finally and gives you that moksha so this is what has to happen baba ji related to uh, what you have just shared so uh, that means every time we are being tested and tested it is it is uh, god testing our faith and how strong our surrender is that is yes definitely and and what about uh, if we are not being tested is that also a sign if we are going through a very uh, no test in our life sort of situation every moment everybody will face a test it can be in any form it can be a form of temptation it can be some trouble like this keeps happening mind getting attracted to worldly things that is also a test how much you can, you have the forbearance how much you get tempted quickly like i have told during our tapas both visions and both manifestations happen some were giving lot of temptation some were trying to give us power money everything type of things and some manifestations were threatening they were trying to wrench our neck anything like that so there is always a test every moment you have to be facing the test the more that you remain in remembrance of the divine as a devotee of the divine master you win thank you baba ji after surrendering baba ji how will we know what is the right decision or action we should take you see when you surrender devotionally your mind becomes more purified then you will become aware of the divine's presence and automatically your decisions your actions will not be of a selfish egoistic nature you will live for others you will run a center for sake of public utility not for your showing your selfish power and egoistic things so you will always want others to come you will know how to love people you will give your love your consideration so these changes automatically come to you if these changes have not come you become egoistic and that power goes to your head so then that means you were not really a devotee of swami that means your mind has not become purified you still have that arrogance that ego attitude oh i am superior i am the owner of this center i can do anything i want i am the king <laughs> type the subjects just have to listen to me so this attitude is what is the egoistic thing that means mind is not purified that person was never a devotee that person always try to buy god such people tries to buy god they work out a deal i give you this gold chain god or give me this power like that they work out a deal always they don't know how to surrender to god 
So that's very important. Babaji, what are the characters or beliefs that we need to cultivate and uphold while working towards building the power of surrender? Consideration about a larger cause. As from the beginning, since 20 years, I tell, Swami used to tell that if we live for ourselves, that is life. If we can live for others, that is mission. So you have to learn to live a mission. Anything that you work, you will always think that let people of the society be benefited. Let there be this thing. Not simply my selfishness, not my body that we have to take care, not my ego that we have to satisfy, that others have to satisfy. Instead, we satisfy others, we love, we consider all others. We give a consideration. So we try to exercise humility, humble. Self-respect is totally different. When you have self-respect, you will remain composed. You won't lose temper, you don't have to scold somebody or you don't have to use foul language to anybody. You will be composed, you will use loving language, but you will be firm in your principles. But if you keep scolding and if you always show your anger and arrogance, that is not surrender. So that surrender needs to be cultivated. It comes automatically if your mind is purified. First look after to purify your own mind. Then selfishness, narrow-mindedness all vanish. And everything will be set right, perfectly all right. Your life becomes a mission because you will learn to live for others. You will always be enthusiastic to give happiness to others. So like that. People come to see you, you would like to give them darshan and love them, care for them. You don't feel insecure. If some people don't want to come, don't curse them, it's all right, it's up to them. If they don't want to come, no problem. We have nothing to lose, we have at our peace. So like that, automatically that character will come. Thank you, Babaji. Uh, the last question for today, how do we manage, how do we handle or manage people and the world's norms and perception while we are working on this uncertain phenomenon? Uh, you see, you have to be noble. However, that does not mean that you have to be an idiot. You have to be careful, you have to be clever, you have to be intelligent. You shall not allow others to sit on your head, but you will love everyone. But you will be polite, but you will be firm. So we have to exercise our principles. See, the justice has to be done. A larger cause may it beneficial to the all society, to the country, to the world. So that type of attitude we have to develop, that is necessary, that is how we can fulfill the norms of this world. Wherever possible, we try to adjust and do. If it is not possible, we cannot help. Finally, it will be our choice what we want to do. Like Swami used to tell, now you have to come to ashram for one hour meditation. Some relative's marriage is happening. It's your choice to which one you want to give an excuse and to which one you want to oblige. Swamiji used to tell, often people want to oblige the relationship and give an excuse. I, today I cannot meditate, la. I have to go for a marriage. So like that they give easily excuse. But they don't want to give an excuse. Hey, today I have to meditate. I cannot come for to your marriage. I am sorry, please. He's, and has anybody had the guts to tell this one? Today Babaji is coming on Zoom. 
I have to be meditating with him. Sorry, I cannot come for this party, for dinner. Some other time we will come. Excuse. So choice is yours. How you want to fulfill the norms of this world? What is it that you want to do? The guru is in the town and you are attracted to something else in the town. So you gain one and you lose the other. Which one you are ready to lose? Which one you are ready to gain? Is your choice. So you have to apply your wisdom to think what we want. So there was, the whole life was in front of me at the age of 20. World was there for me. Relatives, everybody were there. But I gave an excuse to this world. Sorry, I cannot remain in this world. I am going to my Guru's lotus feet. I took up my, packed my things and got into the train, straight away headed to Swamiji's ashram. That's it. Never looked back, 47 years now. So, finally it is your choice. It was my choice that I wanted to come to Swamiji's ashram. It is your choice what you want to do finally. So, you practice meditation, be devoted to Swamiji, pray so that you get inspiration in the proper direction. If your mind becomes purified, if you get surrendered, if you want to serve Swamiji, if you really want to serve Swamiji and Babaji, you will not bother for anybody's comments or shouting or pouting or anything, nothing. You will go on serving. Anybody criticize, anybody, not only these things, anybody want to kill us, let them kill us, no problem. We won't give up serving Swamiji and Babaji. It's your choice. Like that, we served. And people threaten that our lives can be in danger. Telephones used to come. No problem, we are happy. So we came for this purpose. Swamiji also said, where will you go? You will be reborn and you will come back to me again. Don't worry. As simple as it is. So like this, finally, we have to exercise our choice. Everybody in the world exercise their choice. It is their own mistake or the right decision. They have to be purified in the mind. Then they will be able to take the right decision. Means, here right decision means what the criteria? You gain the highest, top, maximum. You have a good opportunity. If you take a decision, you can become the owner of the supermarket. And you have the opportunity, but you get attracted to a chocolate and you take a decision to go for the chocolate, not bother about the supermarket. Choice. So that is the decision. So this decision comes when you have the purified mind. Your mind is able to apply proper wisdom and make proper judgments and choose the right thing. At the right age, we choose to go to Swamiji. Today, people are honoring us as a yogi. It is the grace of the master. We choose. Then that was it there. Choice. May you all be blessed by Swamiji to get proper inspiration in the world, to take right decisions and gain the maximum. Short time is there, very short time life is. Today is there, tomorrow it may not be there. 